I already made a video on the GPT-4 autocoder version 3 that I built in which we were code reviewing and also testing it. You can find it at ecohive.live by typing auto. In this video, we're going to be testing it by building a text adventure game, a web automation tool which takes screenshots of Google searches and saves their results into a text file and a simple music synthesizer. The code for Autocoder 3 is available for Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. Autocoder 3 works both with GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo. You just set turns and then you GPT-3.5 put Turbo begins at first. And whenever it's exhausted, the turns are exhausted, then it moves on to GPT-4. If you just set the turns high enough, then you don't ever really need to use GPT-4. And it is a code executing agent in a way. So it executes the code and it re retrieves the terminal outputs and the error messages. It uses three files, main.py file, which is the code file, content.py, in which you can enter your contents here, which we will use here in a moment, and response.py, which after it writes, after we, GPT returns code, then that code is written to response.py file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste into the content.py file a sample call to GPT 3.5 Turbo with streaming responses. Okay, this is how you can print streaming responses into terminal. So I'm just going to give this as an example to the autocoder. I'm going to make sure that I save the content.py file. And I'm going to return to main.py file. And I'm going to run this. We will be using GPT-4 for every turn. And then it asks us to enter user instructions. This is multi-line input, so we have to write done and then press enter when we're done. I already have some instructions for it, so I'm just going to paste it here. It says, I have given you a sample code on how to call an intelligent AI large language model, GPT. This model currently exists because sometimes it says it doesn't exist and tries to convert the code back to a text adventure completion. Define a system prompt for a text adventure game. You are to define everything that that the GPT needs. Oh, yeah, I made a typo. Anyway, to know in the system prompt, build the game logic and rely on GPT to guide the game. Keep track of the conversation for GPT so it knows what has happened. Set up winning and losing conditions. Don't define the API key as we handle that automatically because we are pulling that from environment variables in my case. The reason why I'm saying this here is because since it's going to try to execute the code, if it tries to define the API key and expects the user to enter it, then it's just going to throw an error. And after this, all I have to do is say done. And then we are running iteration one, GPT-4 this turn, but we are going to use GPT-4 for this video. Like I said, you can use GPT-3.5 Turbo with this implementation as well. It's creating a strategy to itself, define the system prompt for the text adventure game, build the game rule logic and rely on GPT, keep track of the conversation, set up winning and losing conditions, it says don't define the API key, so far, it's creating a system from for a text adventure game. It's your turn. You're a helpful assistant in a text adventure game. Guide the player through the game, giving them helpful information, interacting with the game's world. Keep track of the past conversations and events. Okay, uh, it's defining the game logic. The game prompt is the create game prompt, which is this function of response. It's using, okay, everything seems to be in order. It actually says that this code has executed successfully. So it, this means it has gotten no errors. We can go and review the code here. Yeah, it has written the functions, but it hasn't actually run the game. If you go to echoive.live, you can actually find all the videos that I have created. You can browse them, you can search them, read their descriptions. Also find the code download links. It's echoive.live. When we look at the response code, we see that it's not keeping track of the history of the messages and also it's not running the game continuously. So in these kind of situations, especially when we need to take dynamic user input, I find it better to break out of the loop, the autocoder loop, and actually copy the response back into the content and save it. So now we are going to feed it the new content, perhaps get rid of the strategy and this, save it again, and then rerun the autocoder because now we're giving it a new content, which was the response. 
Now I'm giving it new instructions. Keep track of the ongoing game conversations. Create a loop so the game keeps going on. Use term color. You made a typo. User input prompt and GPT responses and then done. So now we're going to get a new co completion, some code sample. I just want to mention, since this is a code interpreter and try, attempts to try to run the code, you need to have all the libraries already there installed in your environment. I just want to mention that I do have both OpenAI and Term Color installed. So when this code is done, it's going to run it. If you don't have those pip installed, obviously you're going to get an error that the package is not available. So it seems like it's a pending. It's keeping track of the messages. That's good. And test messages system. So it has attempted to execute this code, but since we are getting a user input, unfortunately the sub process which we're using to run the code is doesn't display this input, enter your command. So you just have to know that. So we can actually enter it. And I'm going to say, well, I walk to the castle and when I enter, so it's currently not printing. So I'm going to break out of this loop and go to the response.py. This is our response and I'm going to run this separately. So it is asking for a command, walk to the castle, Let's see what happens. Okay. As you approach the castle, you see a large drawbridge leading to the entrance. The guards are stationed. There are guards on either side of the castle walls, loom high overhead. What would you like to do? Say sneak into the castle. Sneak into the castle, sneaking into the castle is a tricky endeavor. You'll need to, so this is it. This is pretty much what we were looking for. I'm not sure why the color is changing halfway between, but it's keeping track of the conversation and keeping the game loop. And it's using GPT 3.5 Turbo. So just want to mention that we only started with example, open AI call with streaming responses, and it gave us an entire text adventure game. Now let's move on to the web automation tool. I do want to mention again that the code for the Autocoder 3 is available at Patreon. The link will be in the description. So last week, last week since this video is made, before this video was made, I made this video 100 simultaneous GPT-4 API calls, in which, we, in which we were making 100 calls to GPT-4 to return 100 different functions to us. And when we did that, we had 100 functions of all different types. You, this was a fun video. I recommend you watch it. And I was going through some of these, and this is how I'm getting the idea for this video. I saw this automating a web browser code that was returned from GPT-4. And when I tried to run it, this actually gives an error because the browser from Selenium doesn't have find element by name. And I'll actually run it. And so you can see it launches a Google window, but then it says the web driver object has no attribute find element by name. Okay. so. This almost is going to work, but it doesn't quite yet. So I'm going to copy this and bring it to Autocoder. And I'm going to give this as content. Make sure to save it. You always make sure to save the content.py when you change it. I'm going to come back to the Autocoder again and run it. And I'm going to copy this attribute error, okay, from the other file that we ran. And I'm going to give this as instruction and then simply just say done. And then let's see what GPT-4 does with this code. Like I said, since we are going to rerun this code automatically, you do need to have, for example, Selenium pip installed, which I have already done. As we see, it is creating a strategy. Let's see what it does. It is again, trying to use the find element by name. Let's see what happens when it tries to run it. Now it is trying to run it. It opened it and it's going to get the same error, I believe here. Just give it a second. Here it says, cannot find the search box element. The web structure might have changed. Okay, it's got a different error. Let's see, is the code running as intended? Let's say no. It's the to save, fix the error, and then done. Let's see what it does now. Seems like it made the same mistake. Let's see. It's trying to attempt to do it. I 
and it has gotten the same error now I'm going to say yeah fix the error is it time it asks you every time your input so now it's saying that actually replace the find element by name method with the find element method and provide the by name parameter so it's going to import that from web driver common that this by thing and it's going to try to use that by dot name and it's also changed the method to find element let's see what happens now we're almost there Okay, it's opening it, and it did the search result. Perfect. So far, so good. We were able to automatically open up Google and search for automation with Python and Selenium. Now it says the program executed successfully. Is it running as intended? Yes, but we do want to take a snapshot of the search results and extract the text, so I'm going to say no. But now I'm instructing it to say that we want to take a snapshot of the search results and extract the text from it and save the snapshot and text to separate files. I have to say done. So hopefully this time, okay, it's actually doing the save snap screenshot thing. And then it's going to try to attempt to extract the text. It's opening the Google browser to my searching. So far, so good. Okay. Search results.png. Here we go. We were able to save the search result.png and the search result text. There you, there you have it. And since it ran without any problems, it's asking us if the program is executed successfully. Is the code running as intended? Now we say yes. The uh, autocoder stops working. Now, like I said, the code files for the autocoder will be available for download at Patreon. Link will be in the description. Next up is the music synthesizer. In the 100 simultaneous calls video, and out of the 100 functions that were returned, I found this interesting one. Building a simple music synthesizer. I just want to warn you, when I play this, it's going to make a long and annoying sound. Please lower your volumes, so it may be bothersome to you. So I'm going to run this. This does synthesize some sound, but it's really annoying. I'm just going to run this now. Like I said, turn down your volumes. As you heard, that's not very pleasant at all. So I'm actually going to copy this and bring it to autocoder. And to, in content, I'm going to paste this code that we have and save this file. Make sure to save it. And I'm going to come back to our autocoder main.py file and run this. I'm going to give it an instruction as modify this code so that it plays a beautiful melody with harmony. I'm not sure what's going to really happen. I tried this once and it it all right so it's going to create a strategy create a function that plays multiple sine waves at once by summing their amplitudes to find a list of frequencies and durations for the melody and harmony play the melody and harmony by passing those lists to a new function so it is going to so it's importing numpy and simple audio i have simple audio pip installed because it's going to attempt to try to auto execute this code right and here it's generating an array of samples for the sine wave of desired frequency and duration. Let's see. Like I said, this is going to execute and it's going to play some sound, which may be annoying. So just make sure that your volume is manageable when it plays. Because after it finishes this code, it's going to auto execute it. It's doing quite a lot of stuff. I'm not an audio engineer, so I have no idea if this is going to work as well as we hope. But it's defining some melodies and harmony, melody frequencies, melody durations, harmony frequencies. All right, this is interesting. As you see right here. Play the melody and harmony. Okay, let's see. So again, this is going to attempt to auto-execute. So make sure your volume levels are low. Okay, that wasn't very beautiful. Let's just say no and make the let's say let's try one more time. It's saying that make the audio enjoyable and melodic. If that makes sense. Okay, so it's it has written some code and now it's going to try to define a melody using a list of tuples, each tuple containing a note frequency and duration. So it's defining a list with tuples in it. Okay. Let's see where this goes. By the way, the, I just wanted to try a longer format video. 
please let me know in the comments if you like this. My, usually my other videos are pretty short. I try to keep them short, but if you enjoy this. I enjoy making long formats, so I'll try to do more of these kind of live stream, but more controlled in a way. Now I was trying to define harmony intervals using the ratio to the base note frequency. I have no idea what these are, but I'm hoping this will work. Again, this is going to auto-execute and play, try to play these notes. So make sure your volume levels are low, just in case if it plays something annoying. So it's trying to execute now. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's going to get any better, but it really uh, attempted to play something. This was much better than last time, so let's just say yes. And so this is how the GPT-4 autocoder works. You can use GPT-3.5 as well. Like normally speaking, it says when GPT-4, if I were to, let's say, put two here, okay, and run this. And I'll give it some instruction. Let's say calculator. Okay, that's it. And say done. As you see, this time iteration one is using GPT 3.5 Turbo. And for the second iteration, it's going to try to attempt to use GPT 4. Now, we forgot to clear the content. So it's actually still trying to write, keep continue the synthesizer. Plus, it has the uh, calculator. This is interesting. So, anyway, it tries to run this code. And after that, if there is any issue or whatnot, if we move on to the next iteration, it will choose to use GPT-4 in that case. So this is really how it works. See, an error occurred. And now in iteration two, it's using GPT-4. Takes into consideration the output and the error messages. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, you can actually go to Echo Hive AI Academy at echohive.live and search and browse all my videos you can find their descriptions here you can watch them here as well and also find the code download links and the code for this for this video will be available at patreon link will be in the description thank you for watching and see you next time